and the deal put SoFi on a fast track to expand its banking business. The fintech company plans to buy Golden Pacific Bancor. That's a small community lender in California for about $22 million. This is all part of SoFi's plan to bring banking services in-house. So instead of using a third party, they want to be the ones holding customer deposits and issuing loans. SoFi had already applied for a national bank charter, but now instead of applying to be a brand new bank, it will apply to be a bank holding company. A few reasons to do this. For one, it's a lot cheaper. CEO Anthony Noto telling CNBC this morning that the move could save them as much as $300 million. And SoFi is not the only fintech company looking to cut costs. Lending Club was really the trailblazer here, buying Radius Bank last year. Vero Money was approved for its own charter, and Squares Bank officially launched last week. If the trend continues, though, analysts tell me that it could be bad news for those small community banks that have been handling the customer deposits for fintechs so far. And remember, SoFi announced in January it was merging with a SPAC run by Chamath Palihapitiya. That deal is expected to close in a couple weeks, but take a look at shares of that blank check company today. It's been up as much as 16% today. John, back to you. Kate, you know, we were talking to Anthony Noto this morning about this move, and I was trying to figure out whether this sort of U.S. version of the Challenger Bank boom uh, has some danger in it. And he seemed to imply that with this move, they become a bank, they're going to be able to offer interest rates much higher than typical, uh, that they won't be as locked into the mode that banks typically are. And, I mean, that's a risk for them, right? Because that's they're giving money away uh, at, at a higher <laughs> level, kind of as a marketing thing. Is, is there kind of a proven track record for that kind of model? It's been interesting. It puts them closer to the regulators, so it cuts out a middleman, and they have direct contact with the regulators now. So in that sense, it's a risk. The onus is on them. If anything goes wrong, this is now SoFi's problem versus a small community bank. But as far as the interest rate, that has really been how fintechs have been competing. It's how they get people in. They offer a higher interest rate, and often they lower that rate, which SoFi has done, Wealthfront has done. So as interest rates have gone down, they've been forced to sort of dial that back. But that has been the way that people and fintechs have been competing in this market. Who can ha- offer the most money in return on your deposits? So we'll see if they're able to do that. It could also be a good customer acquisition channel. Yeah. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.